Welcome friends to another edition of Tiffin Cast. My name is Seishu and I'm your host. Today we're speaking with Jeff Yoakum, who's a strategic business mentor and coach. Um, and he happens to be mine. To be, to be very frank to you, uh, to you guys, um, Jeff's coming to Connecticut in the next uh, couple of days and I'm excited to have him here, not only uh, to talk shop uh, personally, but also to talk to the CTPPA folks uh, who are actually bringing him in. Jeff, welcome to the very short, brief interview that we're going to have right here. I know you got to go. Thanks, thanks, Sashi. Um, you've just spent a few days um, offshore someplace, really fantastic. I won't mention where, <laughs> unless you want to. Um, and you seem to be always on the go. I mean, you're really out there trying to help photographers uh, redefine not so much their businesses, but who they are almost. Uh, and you call it specialism. Talk to me about what that means, even though I know what it means. What does it mean? What should it mean to people outside of the the the, the sort of group that you've got you've got uh, and you've created for yourself? Right. The um, you're right. There's a lot of confusion. First of all, thank you for for uh, sure. for inviting me here. I'm I you know I yeah, consider you to be one of my best friends in the industry. So it's always nice to talk to you. And um, and the other you know and yeah, I'm traveling offshore. I have all kinds of time to travel and and work because I'm retired. Right. Uh, retired, <laughs> I'm, retired, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm no. retired after yeah after my uh, my stint at Smug Mug, and so it gives me all kinds of time to uh, to work. But yeah, the funny thing is, is um, what I talk about has never been more in demand than it is now. And um, and you're right. The biggest issue is uh, most people mistake specialism for specializing. Right. So if you will bear with me for I'll try to give you the thirty second tour. Uh, everybody pretty much knows what generalism is and generalist is. It's if you have a camera and you're competent at using it, and somebody needs a picture taken, whether it be of a baby or a mountain, um, you know you're you you're a generalist. And um, I want to I really have been making an effort to make the point that that isn't something lesser than specializing or specialism. It's something different. Mm -hmm. And um, you know there are a lot of people out there who really really do enjoy. Um, and, and they're often they're technology oriented. Um, um, more men that I've noticed in the industry than women really enjoy just the you know the generalization of taking pictures. However, I have noticed that it's difficult to make not only to to um, to get paid a premium for that work. Um, you know, the concept of generalization is uh, the handyman rather than you know the plumber or you know the electrician. And, um, and that's a great segue into talking about specialization. Um, specialization is when you focus at a specific niche in an industry, uh, often because, and this is classic business logic, often because there's a need. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you become a plumber because there's a need for someone who really understands the ins and outs, no pun intended, of pipes and, and electrician and so forth. Um, but specialism is a step beyond that it is i believe the evolution of business and by the way we're talking about evolutionary steps um when business first gets started it's you know even as a as an industrial segment it always gets started as a generalization then it slowly evolves right to to specialization and i even talk about that in my book where back in england you know they had barber surgeons you know, right. and the reason there were barber surgeons is because one of the most expensive, expe you know, things that they had to buy was the chair, and there weren't that many people who always needed surgery or always needed their haircut. And in America, it actually became barber surgeon dentist. And when there's only four hundred people in a one hundred mile radius, you've got to figure out how to get paid for putting people in your chair. So you become a generalist. But over time, when that four hundred becomes four thousand, and then forty thousand. Uh, you no longer need to worry about just putting people in the chair, right? The chair is like the camera. It's now a device you use to get the people in of the area that you want to focus on. So you become a dentist or you become a surgeon. By the way, the red, white barber pole, that is actually red for surgery, white for barber, wow. right? So we even see the carryover from the old English days of barber surgeons. But then you become a specialist, which is, okay, now I'm only going to focus at one area of practice. Specialism is the next evolution, which is where we realize that the bulk of service businesses come from the inside out. Um, I started doing this in this industry 10 years ago because I was talking to a lot of photographers when I first started in this industry who were burning out. 
and it didn't make any sense to me. I mean, you choose nobody chooses photography because it pays better than brain surgery, right? I mean, it's a passion business. You're compelled to do it. It's it's an art form that you that drives you. And Absolutely. how can you burn out? I've never met an artist who said, "Oh, I'm burned out of painting. I think I'll go back to accounting." You know, it, it, but I have I do meet a lot of photographers who say, "You know, oh, I'm burned out on the business. I think I'll go back to what I was doing before, which doesn't make me happy." So what I focused on uh, and specialism is a term that I created almost 25 years ago, uh, or at least I coined. Uh, I don't know if I created it. I just never heard it before, and I've been using it since. Uh, I suspect I just stole it from someplace else. <laughs> right? But it, I, I now own it in my head, and what specialism as compared to specializing is, specialism is inside out. It defines what makes you happy and how you're going to make your customers happy. It's based on the, the concept of self-actualization. And instead of saying, well, I'm going to pick a niche to photograph because there's a need there. In specialism, it's defining the niche that you want to photograph based on who you are. And, and when you focus on that, you are so much better than anybody else at being you. And when you build a business model based on that, two things happen. You get paid a premium for it because you're better than anybody else at it. It's the only time quality even enters into their mind. Right. And secondly, you don't burn out. Right. I mean, it's easy to be me. It's easy to be you. Right. Uh, it's effortless in many cases. And by following your business, uh, compel you know, it, it, how your business compels you based on who you are, um, you'll do this the rest of your life with increasing value to an increasing number of people who will pay you an increasing amount of money. And you will expend a decreasing amount of energy doing it. And that's what we've been doing with my, uh, with my community called Team X, which is Team Extraordinary. And, and I don't mean extraordinary like superhero. I mean extra ordinary. Right? right when absolutely. you're ordinary, it doesn't give you any value. But you, you, being unique makes you extra ordinary. And that's, we've been doing this for about four years now. And yeah. we've got hundreds of photographers who have gone through coaching before that, I have thousands of people in the tech industry who went through this and embraced this, and we've seen um, almost a universal success rate. You know, more people come to you, as I say, more work, more money, more friends, and more happiness, and that's what this is all about. Right. I mean, I think in some respects, you're just asking people to be more true to themselves. Right. right. Authenticity. Right. Trust is the new brand. Right. Right. It used to, brand used to be how things are made. Now they're about how you're made, right? Right. You know, when you wear when you wear a brand on your shirt, you're basically very aware of what that stands for, right? I mean, and and so that means the new brand is about trust, and trust is based on authenticity, your ability to be who you are. But the beauty of that is, is that being yourself, as I say, is is so much easier than being what people expect of you. I hear what you're saying, but I think people are going to say. But there are other, there are other expectations uh, people have of us to behave a certain way, to pr produce a certain product, for instance. Uh, I hear that from wedding photographers who say, mm -hmm. well, I would love to photograph weddings in this particular manner, but my, my clients are asking and expecting me to deliver posed pictures, for instance. Well, the, the first thing you have to, well, again, you're, you're assuming that they don't want to do posed pictures. And one of the things that I've learned is that for every niche, there's a you know for every diversity, there's someone who actually embraces that naturally. Um, and by the way, this isn't about what you do. You know, the fundamental of specialism is about no one can copy who you are. Anybody can copy what you do. So if you focus your your specialism, or your, it, it really is specialization when you just focus at what you do. Um, there's a, a photographer who I've known for a long, long time who is incredibly talented. His name is Roberto Valenzuela. And Roberto focuses all of his energy at create at posing. Well, not all, but most of his energy at posing. He's written books. Mm -hmm. I've heard him speak. Mm -hmm. He really is a master at posing. Sure. However, if you happen to be someone who wants to have a more candid and and his posed people, after he's learned how to do it and he's spent years perfecting it, I have to admit his poses look natural, right? But the reality is, I'm not sure anybody else in the world can, is as talented as he is mm. in posing, right? So it's something you have to learn to do. Sure. But what you don't have to learn to do is be you. So if, in fact, you are someone who wants to focus and got into photography because you really don't want to, to, to 
make something artificial seem natural. Uh, it's so much easier to fo to fall to follow that kind of logic sure. in specialism, right? Um, and again, it goes back to if you draw people to you who are like you, mm -hmm. who celebrate the same things that you celebrate, uh, you will find that you don't have to spend a lot of time creating an artificial naturalness. Um, you can focus at just getting. And so when the bride says, oh, you know, I want these post pictures, often that's because you've set that expectation. But, you know, I can tell you that I know a lot of very high-end photographers who say they don't believe in shot lists. One of them is, is Joe Busink, who's, you know, I, I, um, I've always flattered myself to think, it. Joe and I have known each other for a long time, and, and he tells me I'm his friend, and that flatters me greatly because Joe is one of, the, one of God's great people. And you can see he focuses all of his attention at the bride on the day of the wedding. Sure. But it's not about posing. And, you know, I, I've never met anybody who afterwards didn't think Joe was, was the gift from heaven for their wedding. You know, uh, so I'm not suggesting one is better than the other. I am suggesting, however, that when you become more natural, your job is to engage with your client, whether it's weddings or photography. And I've never met a camera that could create a wonderful moment. And I've never met a successful photographer who couldn't, you know? And so I liken it to, you know, using specialism, you create a message that says, we're going to have this wonderful experience together. And thank goodness I know how to take pictures of it so you can remember it later. But it's not about having the camera. Your photographers are no longer an extension of their camera, or at least they, they don't have to be. You know, and and they are the camera is now an extension or just a tool right. uh, that they use. It's like the chair. Going back to the original, sure, right. right? The chair no longer defines you. The chair is just something you use to do what you really, really love and what you really, really good at. Excellent. Hey, say hi to your kids for me. <laughs> Can you help? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for mine. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're they've got a friend over and they're creating quite a ruckus. Even though, okay, we got I got two double doors here. Um, no, it's the best noise in the world, <laughs> hearing kids yelling and laughing, right? I mean, no matter who you are. As, as, long, as, as long as they're not fighting with each other, I'm fine. And as long that. as it's not on a plane for most people. I, they were <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of planes, I know you arrive on Wednesday. I look forward to taking you yep. out for lunch. Uh, we're going to continue our chat, of course, uh, at that point. And then you're going to present uh, with the CTPPA folks in the evening. Uh, right. It's going to be an amazing, amazing talk. I'm, and sure to note, I'm not going to talk sure. about it in general. I'm going to give them tools. Sure. Right, I'm going to shake them up a little. I, I, Please, I, I yes. want them. I want them to think. I don't want them to agree. Right. My job is not to get people to agree with me. My job as a coach and as a um, as a strategic um, a business consultant is to get you to think, and for us to have a discussion about what's right for you. Sure. Um, and and that's what I'm going to try and do with this group. I'm going to shake them just a little bit, and then we're going to talk about what falls out and what works and what doesn't work. Every time I do one of these things, uh, i be honest with you. Success isn't walking away knowing a room full of people are thinking differently. That is a nice thing. It, success for me is walking away either being reaffirmed in what I think or changing how I think as well. So this becomes an interaction. You know, nobody's ever right forever. So you've got to constantly think about what it is you do. But I think I've got a pretty compelling argument about why this industry is evolving, and I hope that everybody that comes can hear that. And again, if you hear it, I'll give you some tools to be able to use it. This, you know, and by the way, I'm not there selling anything. Uh, I don't have currently any openings in coaching. I've run out of books. <laughs> I am showing up here because I love you, yeah. and I love that area, and we've got lots of Team X coaches there, yeah. um, and I love talking about this. So if you come out yeah. and, and listen, I'm going to try and teach you something, not try and, and sell you something. Um, just a sort of a personal testimonial uh, of, to you, sir, because uh, the fact is when you came into my life, I uh, have started to think about business and life in so many different ways than ever before. I mean, it's just like, uh, it's like, a. I mean, I know it's a cliche to say a light bulb went off, but yes. It's like I like that of so much. Again, just thinking, right? Well, you know, it's like the stadium lights came on. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, whoa. You know, because most people, and I was most people, I would think, uh, think and pursue photography or anything that they've found a way to do things. Whether it's a, 
you know, uh, uh, being a brain surgeon or a photographer, it doesn't matter. You just sort of do things because that's what you were learn, you were taught to do in a certain right. way. But what you've taught me is that it isn't so much what you do, but it is how I guess you are perceived and how you are projecting to people, and right. and people then resonate to that. I mean, that's powerful right. stuff, you know. Right. I mean, the four steps for me are discover, define. Um, declare and deliver. And the first two are all about you, right? Discover right. what it is that makes you happy, not just feels good. You know, I make the, always say the point, ice cream makes me feel good, right. but it doesn't make me happy. But you know what does make me happy? Sharing ice cream. And for, for, for those of us, those of people out there listening, understand that specialism and everything I talk about really is a singular strategy of empathy. You build your business on the concept of personal empathy. Right. And you will always succeed, always, and be happy doing it. Now, the question is how, right? I'm not everybody has that same thing, but this is exactly right. This is a business message that changes, that, that makes you kind of grow individually, you know, as a human, as Absolutely. a person. Absolutely. That's why I like the term Mezilla, right? It doesn't change you. It just makes you 10 feet tall, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I'm, I, 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 you're blessed me to tell me that, too, uh, Seishu. I... I um, you know how I feel about you, and and uh, Thank you. Thank uh, and, you and to know that you're doing, you're you're happier and doing well Absolutely. as a result of some of this is uh, it, it, no better gift for me. Thank you, and I continue working with you. It's not hasn't hasn't quite finished. Yeah, we're yet. not done yet, man. No, 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 no. I know. Stuff. Yeah, that's it's, right. it's it's one of the wonderful things about you, Jeff. It's like you can continue learning from you, like like forever if you wanted to. And you know, it's been wonderful also uh, interfacing with Christine Tremblay and Sarah Leiberger. They're just such wonderful people, I know. Uh, anytime, Jane, and Jane Ammon, who is up in that Jane area. Jane Ammon is going to be right? coming up here to inspire. But um, I'll, and I, I talk to Jared uh, Bauman all the time, and you know, it's right. just these wonderful folks. Uh, Chris Scott, oh my God! You know, I, I can't believe how I'm surrounded yeah. by the world's greatest yeah. people, and and I I just thank my lucky stars that what I what I happen to teach is something that they want to learn. Right. Uh, and but you're right. I mean, you know, look, we could go on and on, and it it gets all you know, kind of over the top at some point. Look, this is a bit. I'm a business coach, but you know, just because I'm a business coach doesn't, you know, I can't separate my business and my personal life. And I don't believe anybody who's in photography can either. Oh, it's um, tough. Like I said, we're in this industry. We do what we do because we're personally compelled. Right. And thank goodness that we know how to make a living doing it, and and not a bad living at all. Indeed. Thank you. See you on Wednesday. All right, bud. Thanks for uh, taking the time on Sunday to talk to me. Will do. Take care. You too. Bye.